Growing up at, at an early age, the word Jesus and the word God, actually, I hated the terms. I hated the words. I hated everything about it. Now, th in this video, I did take some notes, so I might be looking down at that as I'm doing right now. This is my story from going from Catholic, growing up, going to Catholic school, to going new age, if you want to call it that, yoga, me uh, meditation, and all that to recently coming back into kind of really rediscovering not Catholicism as much as like Jesus's story. I'm going to say there is a lot of issues I have with the church. Let's, I just want to talk about it. So I, I wrote down here, early age Catholic. I went to Catholic school. Okay. So now anybody who grew up in the eighties, probably nineties, actually my sister was in the nineties and she had the same thing. Going to Catholic school, they used Jesus almost against you, right? It was kind of this thing of like, well, if you don't do this homework, Jesus is not going to be happy with you or something like that, right? So something. So they, they, they put this fear of Jesus or God into you with everything that they did. And it started making me just not like the whole thing. And they really, they didn't really drive home what Jesus was doing in my mind. And a lot of people that I went to school with and my sister included to these Catholic schools, I mean, there was a lot better education there because I did go to Catholic school and I did go to public school and by far the better education. And if I ever had kids, I would want to send them to something along the lines of a Catholic school because there was a better education. There really was. But as far as teaching the message I don't know that they did a good job. Now, the precious moments, I don't even know. A lot of people, these younger people aren't even going to know what that is. They were around, so there was these little books that you could read, these little Catholic uh, Bible-ish books that you would read. And it would teach a message, but it really, they really didn't drive it home. They just, Jesus, you know, was this guy and he, he preached and he was mad at people and he destroyed a church when they were, uh, you know, selling in there one day or Jesus is going to come get you, you know, if you don't do this or, if, you know, if you're a batting class, you know, this is going to look bad and Jesus and, you know, like it was almost propaganda. It was propaganda. And I remember my first day I had just gotten out of kindergarten and I hated it. I didn't like the conformity of it. And my my parents were going to be sending me to for, uh, first grade, obviously, at this Catholic school. And I remember very vividly, I was the only one on the bus, and I threw my apple at the bus driver and I said, I don't want any of this propaganda to take me home. And they're like, where did you even learn this word? I said, I have no idea. I don't want anything to do with this. Take me home. And of course, you know, this got reported to the principal and the principal and the first day, you know, my parents were there and it was a hot mess. And I just remember it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, you know, and I don't know. I don't know. You know, it, it, I did have fun. I did actually have way more fun at Catholic school than I did at public. I was very popular in public school, but it really didn't, it always felt empty to me. It always felt I don't know. I, I I didn't really care for, for the way things were there. So I wrote down this. Okay, so one of the things that they seemed to drive home, even though everybody in my class had money, <laughs> my parents were the poorest ones, scared to make money or making money was bad. They really drove it home. And it still controls me a bit to this day. That making money was bad, that having money was bad. If you had money, you were a bad person. And it just, I'm like, what, why? You know, why Why do we have to live so poor, you know, to, to follow Jesus? And then they would always use the, the Jesus, uh, you know, like, it, uh, it's easier for you to put a camel through the, the head of a needle than a, a rich man to get to heaven. And they would always use that. And I'm like, why are these the examples that they're using when, most of the kids I went to school with, their dads were like lawyers and doctors. I mean, lawyers and doctors, they all had money. They all lived up in the hills. They all had these huge houses. I lived out 
<clears throat> by the lake on the south side of it where, you know, the the peasants lived, right? And um, I remember one time, uh, one, of, one of my friends came over, he was friend at the time, over my house, and he's like, why is your house so small? I said, why? I said, I don't ever want you to come back here. I, I, why don't you leave? <laughs> you know, like, just leave. My my dad worked so hard. And this dude is going to come over and complain about... I remember that same guy. When my parents moved into the new house. And it, it, it it's big. And it's got this huge backyard. I remember that same kid. He... It, my, my my we were supposed to go to this camp and we did go to this camp for for my school and uh we went to this camp and this this kid was making fun of uh, me the whole time and then so my my mom drove us to this camp and then his dad was supposed to pick us up and then drop us off and we had just moved into the new house and he's making fun of me for money this entire time and we go to the new house. He's like, oh, my gosh, this thing's huge. I said, I, well, you said we didn't have money. I don't know how this happened. But anyway, so that that was, I, I don't know. So that was one thing that really went through my head at the time was like, money's bad. Money's bad. Money's bad. I, I, I don't know why they did it. I don't know why they did it. Another thing is back when I was growing up, I got my little notes here. I'm going to look at my notes. Uh, it was almost fashionable to say that you went to church on Sunday. That doesn't mean that it changed you as a person. It just means that you went to church on Sunday. And if you didn't go to church on Sunday, you were a bad person. Like you could be the worst human being on the planet. But if you went to church on Sunday, you know, it was fashionable to, to go there and fashionable to say that you went there. It's kind of like nowadays, like I went to this concert, you know, whatever concert and, you know, it's fashionable to, to do this kind of stuff or like, you know, I wear these kind of clothes now or whatever it is. It was just, it was the fashionable thing to do, but it really didn't change the people as, as they were. And that's why, that was another thing that, that kind of like swayed me away from really liking the whole Catholic religion. I'm like, these people are not very kind. They are always obsessed with money, but they go to church, like, because the city that we moved to, at the, from my growing up city, I mean, these people had cash, money, I mean, a lot of it, and I would, there were some of the worst people I ever met in my life, like, but I mean, I'm not saying all of them, I, I actually had quite a few uh, really good friends, but, you know, like, an example of this, I, 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 I this, there was this one time I was in school, and this girl comes up to me and her boyfriend's next to to, to her. And, and she's like, didn't you wear that like two weeks ago? I'm like, who's keeping track of this? Like, who, who is this person? The school that, you know, the, where I grew up, man, if you, you know, you, you, you didn't really, you, like, that would have been fine, right? And I said, you ever talk to me again, I'm going to punch your boyfriend. And they both looked at me and I'm like... It, and, and that was that was the end of that thing. <laughs> I was like, "What is, like, who pays attention to this stuff?" But this is where I was. This is where we li were living. This is where I was growing up. And it drove me nuts. But then these same people would be at Catholic uh, church that Sunday, and I'm like, "Are you not hearing what's going on?" So another, and I really started. I hated going to church. I hated it. I hated it. I don't know why. I don't know if it was the, the singing. The singing used to drive me nuts. I'm like, I'm reading the Bible over here. I don't remember Jesus breaking out into a musical and starting, you know, like, I don't remember a musical happening at the, at the Seder, you know, like that they were at at the Last Supper. Like, I don't remember this. You know, I, so it was like, I started hating it. I'm like, if you cut the singing out, this thing would be like 40 minutes. Another thing is like, why do you got to react or re reenact the Last Supper every single time. Why can't it be special? Why can't you just do it on like Christmas and Easter and stuff like that? We can come in here and actually talk about the Bible. And I have been to other churches. I didn't really care for them either. You know, that they, they kind of just talk about the, the Bible because they seem fake to me. Like, I, I don't know. Like I went to a Protestant church. They, they, they're they having like a musical up on the thing. They got, uh, they got like, uh, the, you know, screens with movies going. I'm like, what kind of, like, this is like, and then I went to a Baptist and, you know, I got people floating in there and Jesus, this over here. And I'm like, what is going on with these things? 
And uh, you know, you start you start reading in the in the Bible. Jesus says, "Where two or more gather in my name, you know, it'll be done or whatever." And I'm like, that sounds better to me, man. That sounds like what I am looking for. Not floating in the air, not projectors and a, a musical going on over here, not reenacting the Last Supper every single Sunday, like. I started to drive me nuts. I'm like, why can't we go in here? Why can't we go in here? Read some scripture and just talk about it and then go home. I, why do we got to do this thing every day? And the standing up and down, up and down. I'm like, why are we standing up and down? Why? Oh, yeah, it used to drive me crazy, crazy. And I just, I, I hated it. I hated it. Oh, and another thing that used to happen to me because my mom is four foot 11. So she wanted to always sit in the front pew. And the priest at the time would just use me as an example. One time, starter jackets were really popular at the time. The, you know, whatever NBA team. I had a Bulls starter jacket, right? And I was playing with a little starter thing. A starter logo. And this dude uses me as an example and his homily. And he's like, and people, if they were paying attention and not playing uh, with their jacket, they would hear more of what was being said. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Who wants to deal with this guy? You know, like, who wants to deal with this? You're shaming me for having money. You're shaming me for, uh, you know, if, if uh, I don't know, if I don't do my homework correctly, Jesus is going to come down and strike me. And I'm like, uh, like, who wants to deal with this, right? So I, I don't know. It started, I just started to dread it. And even the term Jesus or God started to just trigger me. There's another thing that we were dealing with, and I don't think you deal with as much now. But when I was growing up, people who wanted to get out of, now I wasn't alive for Nam, Nam, but if you wanted to get out of going to Nam, Vietnam, the war, for those of you who don't understand that one, you could become a priest. You could go to seminary and you could become a priest and you wouldn't be drafted for the war. And I think a lot of the priests that we were dealing with were that person <laughs> because they, a lot of them were pretty miserable, pretty miserable. And that was another thing that deterred me from going to church. I was going to get made fun of for my starter jacket. They were miserable, you know, like, I mean, who wouldn't be? You're like, 40 years into this, you've never had sex in 40 years. I, I like it. I, I don't understand. I don't understand that part of the whole thing. Like the Jews, they got wives, right? That, you know, the, the, you know, the rabbis and all that, they got wives. I don't understand. We're supposed to be modeling this after Jews and they got wives. Why, why the church? Like, I don't understand. I don't understand. And that's why there were so many issues with priests and stuff like that. You can only lock somebody up from that world for so long before the demon comes out. So I went through years of this, years of this, years of this. And my buddy, my best friend, he, he his grandfather left him these tapes. And these tapes were of Wayne Dyer. And we started listening to Wayne Dyer. And I started like, this is way better, way better than going to church. Way better, way better. This was early 2000s, maybe 99. No, I, we weren't really talking. Then. So it had to been early 2000s. Came across this guy, Wayne Dyer. And he was just talking about, you can manifest this stuff. You can meditate. And, you know, like, and he had these manifest, uh, manifestation meditations and, and all this wonderful stuff. Meanwhile, I have never, I have manifested stuff into my life, but it never felt right. It never felt right. It never... I don't know. It was always stuff that really didn't make me happy at all. And so, you know, you know, you're doing these meditations and the sound of Om and the sound of Ah and all that kind of stuff. And you're doing these meditations and uh, I'm going to meditate this over here and sit down there and just concentrate in this through the third eye and do all this kind of stuff. And even to this day, when I smell incense, I can, my, my third eye just it opens. It happened to me. I went to church for uh, Easter vigil on Saturday, it happened to me because they were pouring incense into this church. I'm like, is this stuff free all of a sudden? So, you know, and then my third eye's opening and, uh, and and I'm like, what is going on? So I actually started like hallucinating a little bit at church. I'm like, this is nuts. 
So Wayne Dyer comes around, Tony Robbins comes around. I start watching these guys. I'm like, this is so much better than church. So I, I really started struggling getting myself to go to church. I still was going to church because I was living at my, uh, at my with my parents still. So just to please them and just, I started doing the fashionable thing too. I started going to church. I, it has to be fashionable. You got to go to church every Sunday. You got to talk about it the next day, kind of like the sports game. And I don't know, I just, it, it was more and more and more misery. And then I moved well, before that. So I got married, I, I found my, my ex-wife and we really should have dissolved this thing <laughs> before we got married, but we didn't. I started really pouring myself into this. Now I never got into crystals. I never got into really any of that other stuff. I got into going within, trying to become my own God, trying to become the manifester of my life and trying to do everything myself. Now I'm not saying that you can't have some of that stuff. And I'm not saying that that isn't going to happen, but if you let it happen naturally, like everybody's got this little voice in their head. And I, I think that's like, the quote, the hero's journey is when you listen to that little voice in your head is telling you where to go. Now you can listen to that or you cannot listen to that. And most of my life, I have not listened to that, even though I have it in my head. For example, like I keep having that, that voice tell me, get rid of this couch that you got upstairs on trash day. Today's trash day. It did not go out. It irritates me that it did not go out. So there's those little voices. So, and then I'm looking down here. So meditation happened. And then I came across the Bhagavad Gita. I came across the Tao, Je, the, the Tao Te Ching. I come across a couple others and I started reading these other religions. And some of them sounded really good. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds so much better than this thing over here where Jesus is striking me down for not doing my homework. God's going to murder me for not like, you know, doing something, I don't know, or doing something. I'm like, man, that is just a lot. And then, so I started looking at these other new religions. So I'm starting to read these books and I'm like, yeah, this, some of this stuff sounds a whole lot better, especially the Bhagavad Gita. They follow this normal dude. He's got normal life things. He's got, you know, this normal stuff going on and, and everything like that. You know, it's like, yeah, this is, this is it. This is it. So and I started doing yoga. Now yoga, I I actually, in my mind, I was only doing yoga to, because I had just, I, I was lifted for years. When I started doing yoga, I was really tailing back on the lifting. I might actually have stopped lifting at this point. I think I did. This is when I was way overweight. This is when I was 400 some odd pounds. And I, I, I needed something to do. So I had my trampoline at the time, and I still actually have that trampoline. And I had a cellar sizer. Go check it out down below. Make me a little money. Um, but I had the cellar sizer, and I had yoga. And I was over 400 pounds. And I, I couldn't really run. I couldn't, walking was fine. I couldn't really run. So I decided this is, this is going to be how I was going to lose weight. I didn't think it was yoking, which I found out years later that, that it was supposedly yoking the devil or whatever. And I, I didn't believe it. Actually, even when I did hear this, I really didn't believe it. I'm like, that's bullshit. I, like, I'm, over, I'm over here doing stretches and I'm in a pretzel and stuff like that. How am I yoking the devil? But then I started really thinking about it. And there was times after I did yoga, I was so mad that I actually had to leave the house. I'm like, I would tell my person at the time, I said, I don't know what just happened to me. I said, I'm done with, just got done yoga, sweat pouring out of me. I'm gonna take a shower, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I don't want you to see this mood that I'm in. Not that I would hurt anybody, I'm, I'm the like most passive person, but, I don't want to have any like irritating like conversations or something like that. It's just, it's going to lead to something stupid. I know it is. I'm going to go somewhere else. And it would take me like an hour, maybe two, just to get this whatever happened out of me. And I remember that very vividly, especially, well, I'm not going to get into that, but especially certain, certain yoga things, it would really get, get it out of you like bad. It was always anger for me too. It was always anger. And I feel like I was inviting 
like anger into me or something like that because it made no sense how are you gonna do a pretzel over here and all of a sudden you want you want to like just I don't know bitch slap somebody like <laughs> like how does that work like why why is that a thing and I, I became obsessed like I was obsessed with weightlifting to the point of ruining my life practically and I became obsessed with yoga to the point of ruining my life almost. So I stopped. When I see that happening, I just walk away. There's no moderation with that. I'm not going to do it on the weekends. I'm not going to just... Actually, this you know what? Yoga, I actually think it started from P, P90X. I think that's how it got started with it, is I started doing it on the Saturday. Like, if you did the P90X, I think Monday through Friday was hardcore workouts. And then on Saturday, you would do this yoga to stretch yourself out and become limber again. And Sunday was a day, day off, and then you would start to cycle over again. And I'm like, I really like the yoga part. I don't really like any of this other stuff, but the yoga part I like. I think that's where it actually came from, because then it dawned on me. I'm looking at my notes, the meditation, the yoga, the, the, the spiritual reading, all these, all these things came out of India pretty much or Asia. And I'm like, well, they do yoga. I'm like, why don't, why don't I do yoga? I'm fat. I can't really w run or anything like that. I got the cellar sizer over here, which is great. And I got this yoga over here. I'll, I'll do that. Now it did help me lose weight. It really did, but it really had a lot of negative consequences to it. One thing that I don't think I talked about now is when I moved out to Philly, there was one time that I, I was talking about that I was meditating, right? And there was one meditation that I did do because I, I was I was finding myself trying to manifest all this stuff and really, but it, here's the thing. I was trying to manifest things while having in my back of my head that Jesus is going to kill you or you're going to die if you have money. So I, I fought back and forth between those two things. And so I was meditating on it and I said, Jesus, please come to me. And, and say something. And this is actually what the exact thing that showed up into my, my meditation. It was, it was my, my, Jesus came into my meditation. And it was the Jesus version that you read about in Revelations. And he said to me, know that you're on this planet, but not of it. And that's it. It was telepathic. There was no mouth moving. There was nothing, nothing like that. And that was it. And the meditation ended. And I'm like, what? What? How did that happen? What? So <clears throat> that didn't really answer my question. So, but back to um, back to Philly. So when I moved to Philly, I'm like, finally, wash my hands of going to church uh, for just for bragging rights or whatever, I'm not going to, I'm not going, I'm not going back to that place. And my mom's, and my mom actually, she knew where I was living and she, she plotted out how close these Catholic churches were to me. And she's like, this one's closest. This one's got a really good uh, priest. You should go to this one. I'm like, lady, I did it for the years, decades, I'm not doing it anymore. She's like, you're going to hell. You know, like I'm like here, here more of this fear-based stuff, right? So I didn't do it for years. And then we moved back to Cleveland. I'm like, you know what? I kind of want to go back. Maybe it's because of the fashionable thing or so I can tell my mother that I went to church because I'm not going to lie about that. And, uh, or really anything. Most people who know me know that they, they can't stand me half the time because I don't lie. And, um... I started going. And I'm thinking, like, I'm going to get struck down lightning's gonna strike me I, you know I'm gonna you know like because I haven't been here for so long but no it was like natural I just it, it, and you know the person I was with it at the time she's like yeah, man you know all of this stuff she's like I feel so lost here I'm like the up and down standing and the singing all that kind of stuff you know so I knew all of it and uh yeah but it's still I liked it but I still wasn't getting it and I'm not saying this still to this day that I get it I really I don't know that I do but it felt kind of good to go. It felt kind of at home to go, and I liked it. So I did it, and we were going for a long time. And then she decided to become Catholic herself, and I've seen it change her life completely, completely. And I've seen it change a lot of other people's life completely, a lot of people. I don't, I, I guess it's still just in the back of my mind of going to Catholic school or something it's still there. 
You know, it's still, I'm still working on that. Like this is, you know, there's a happy ish ending to this story, but it's not like, you know, super, you know, like enlightenment. I, you know, I, I did not achieve enlightenment or anything like that. So we're coming into Lent of this year. And this is actually a reason I'm making this video. I, we're coming into Lent in the beginning of this year. And I was going through a rough patch mentally. Like I'm, it, it usually happens. I have one of these brains that never shuts up. And I know a lot of people can understand that, but mine is like, I can't even go up the stairs without it trying to do something else. I'm like, why, 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 why can't we just go up the stairs? So, and it's like, well, you know, if you go up the stairs, this is going to happen or this happened. I'm like, bro, like. We're going up the stairs after five minutes of fighting with my, my, my mind. So I went to get a tarot reading, which is the first time I've ever had a tarot reading in my life. And I couldn't believe how accurate it was. This woman didn't know me. I've never met her. No, I met her once. Never talked to her though. Like she sold me, sold me a candle. That was our interaction. She's never interacted with me other than selling me a candle, like no big conversation, nothing. I'm like, how in the world is this so accurate? So it got me to thinking like, maybe I can just manifest whatever I want to in, in, in life and everything. And this just, this is, this has been going on for a, a while now. I'm thinking like you manifest whatever you want. And I've had instances of it. A lot of instances of it but it was usually stuff that I really after a while was like I don't I don't want this you know at all this isn't this isn't like good for me like that voice in your head like that good like there's multiple voices usually in your head but the one that actually is is calming is reassuring is like telling you like this is gonna be all right it's gonna take a little longer than you like all that kind of stuff that voice is the voice you want to follow. The the voice in your head is trying to tell you, got to get it done, got to get it now, 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 now. That voice is not good. That voice is not good at all. That voice is like the voice that you want to listen to because you power and, and you know, and in, 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 uh, let you be who you are. The other voice is trying to do whatever. I, I don't know. So I go to this tarot reading and I'm like, I cannot believe how accurate this is. I do. I did take notes. I really kind of want to shred them and burn them. Took notes. I'm like, I can't believe how accurate this is, but something still didn't feel right. Actually that weekend that I did that, I was staying at, I'm not going to say, uh, I was at the weekend that, that I did that. I was miserable the whole weekend, the whole weekend. I kept reading this thing like it was God, but it was, I was miserable. It, I, like it's, it was probably the lowest low I've ever been in, in my life. It, I was pushing everything away. Like it was, it was miserable. So I don't recommend it at all. I, if you're, if, you, if you're thinking about tarot or, or, or going to tarot or whatever, I like, I would not do it. Uh, I just, I don't know. It was, it was terrible. I started watching The Chosen and that's actually kind of what changed everything a little, quite a bit for me. I started watching The Chosen. I started reading the Bible. I started really going to church and really started listening to everything. And I started kind of seeing what people were talking about as far as really feeling Jesus and stuff like that. Now, I still think that church needs to be different than it is. You know, like I, I really don't understand why they do what they do, but yeah, it was, it was a lot different. It's, it's a lot different. I, I can't say that there's, you know, rainbows everywhere and stuff like that. I can't say that I'm like in the mo the best mood of my life, but there is a knowing or a calm calmness about it that I have really uh, appreciated. And the last thing that I'm really thinking about is like a lot of this manifestation stuff does have a root in the Bible. And that is where I still kind of struggle with these things. Because, Like example, it's in Matthew, if you believe, 
you will receive whatever you uh, pray or you ask for in prayer. You shall have it. And stuff like that, when they say stuff like that, maybe it's taken out of context. I don't know. But when they say stuff like that, it really... It's like, why Why do you say this? And you say, like, if you're rich, you can't get in. Like, I, I don't know. There, it's all over the place. So that that I'm still really looking into. But as far as everything else goes, yeah, I, I like, I would definitely not. The, like, But then they do med, med, uh, mention med, uh, meditation in the Bible. Like, Jesus would go off and, and meditate or pray. pray. So I don't know, there, there's some of this stuff that I still go back and forth with, but by and large, like getting out of that new spirituality, trying to do everything yourself is a step in the right direction for me. Like not being like God, basically. Like, you know, because then, then you have other scriptures that come come into head in my head. Like, you know, isn't it written in your scripture that you are God? You know, I'm not saying that we're God, but I'm just saying we're a part of it. And it just, I don't know. So there is some of that confusion still. And I know down in the comments section, you know, everybody's going to be whatever. But so I'm still working on that. But I have noticed the calmness that I didn't have prior to this that is there. And I'm going to keep making videos about this sort of thing because I think I have a unique experience with this because I did go to Catholic school, school and I did kind of come out of that and do new new spirituality or new age or whatever and then come back to it. We'll see how this all unfolds. But it, it's definitely been a journey for sure. And it's still a journey. <laughs> it's still a journey. I, I, like a lot of the people that I've, I've watched do these these videos, they look so happy. And maybe, I don't know, maybe they are, maybe they're not. But as far as me, like, there is a calmness now that wasn't there prior, for sure. We'll see about the rest of it. We'll see about the rest of it. You know, if I follow that little voice in my head, I think everything is right. When I don't, I think is when everything falls apart and I've got pure misery. And I think that's what I've taken away from this more than anything is you, you know what voice in your head or feeling that you have is right and it will lead you to where you're supposed to go but when you try to control that is where misery comes now this path is not going to be roses and butterflies all the time there is going to be struggling and suffering and it is written like that in the bible but it's different for some reason it's like you feel like there's somebody backing you through the misery whereas in the tarot card life or whatever you are your own god and you've got to figure it out yourself and i think that is where a lot of misery comes i think a lot of people that is why they need counseling and mental mental health because they feel like there's nothing there watching out for them at all it's you and only you and it's not so that is the what I've come away with through this whole journey that I've gone through in the last, I don't know, 40-ish 40, 40 days. And I'm definitely going to make more videos about this because, like I said, I'm coming at it from a different angle, I think, than a lot of people. Anyway, comments, questions down below. Like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next video.